In heavy engineering, there's a fundamental law. The greater a machine's power, the more it is bound to one place. The world's biggest machines are prisoners of their own power, stationary titans locked to a single location. So why is there now a frantic high-stakes race, a new engineering arms race between China and the West to build a machine that breaks this very rule? The answer is a massive engineering paradox, and at its heart are three specific titans, the three biggest all-terrain mobile cranes ever built. This isn't a story about a bigger engine, it's about a billion dollar calculation that's changing everything. And understanding that calculation is the real mission. Before we can understand the solution, we must first appreciate the enormous scale of the problem. And that problem can be seen soaring hundreds of feet into the air on wind farms all across the globe. Onshore wind turbines are experiencing a period of unprecedented growth, not just in number, but in sheer physical size. We have entered the era of the 5 megawatt plus turbine. Their towers now regularly exceed 500 feet in height, and the individual blades can be over 300 feet long. The nacelles, the complex gearbox and generator assemblies that sit atop the towers, can weigh 130 to 230 tons on their own. For decades, the only tool capable of lifting components of this size to such extreme heights was the lattice boom crawler crane. These are the undisputed kings of heavy lift, capable of hoisting thousands of tons, but their greatest strength, their immense size and stability, is also their most significant weakness. They are profoundly immobile. Getting a large crawler crane to a remote job site is a monumental undertaking. The crane has to be completely disassembled at its last location, loaded onto a fleet of 50, 100, sometimes close to 200 separate trucks, driven to the new site, and then painstakingly reassembled. This process can take two, three, sometimes even four weeks of expensive, labor-intensive work before a single lift can even be attempted. This has created a billion-dollar bottleneck. As the demand for wind energy explodes, project developers are finding that their schedules are being dictated not by manufacturing or planning, but by the agonizingly slow assembly and disassembly times of their crane fleet. Every day spent waiting is a day of paying a full crew to stand by. Every week of delay is a week a multi-million dollar turbine isn't generating power and revenue. The industry was screaming for a solution. They needed the power of a crawler but with the speed and agility of a mobile crane. They needed a machine that didn't exist. This was the problem that sparked the arms race, an industry tension point demanding a pivot to innovation. With billions on the line, the race to engineer a solution began immediately, and the machine that crossed the starting line first wasn't just an evolution. It was a complete reimagining of what a mobile crane could be. The problem was clear, and the race was on. The first machine to shatter the old rules of engineering was a true pioneer, the XCMG XCA 2600. Before this machine, the idea of a 2600 metric ton capacity crane driving on public roads was pure fantasy. The XCA 2600 made it a reality, and in doing so, created an entirely new class of machine. It was the crucial proof of concept that shattered the industry's preconceived notions of what was possible. Mounted on a highly advanced 10-axle all-wheel drive, all-wheel steer chassis, it was a masterclass in mobile engineering. Each wheel station is equipped with an independent hydraulic suspension system, allowing the massive carrier to articulate and keep all wheels on the ground, even over the rough, uneven terrain of a typical wind farm. Power comes from two separate engines. A 650 horsepower diesel engine in the carrier provides the mobility, allowing the machine to travel at speeds up to 50 miles per hour on highways. But once on site, a second, 571 horsepower engine in the upper crane structure takes over, dedicating its full power to the immense hydraulic systems. Its main boom can reach a maximum height of 558 feet. But to tackle the tallest turbines, 
it can be fitted with a luffing jib, extending its total reach to a staggering 656 feet. The XCA 2600 was revolutionary. It proved that a machine with near crawler level capacity could drastically reduce setup time. But as groundbreaking as it was, it was only the beginning. The real battle was for the 4,000 ton crown. The pioneer had proven it was possible. Now the true titans of the industry would enter the battle, unleashing two 4,000 ton monsters. The Sony SAC 40,000T and the XCMG XCA 4000. Everything becomes more complex. The metallurgy of the steel, the pressure in the hydraulic lines, the stability calculations. This is the absolute peak of land-based mobile engineering, where two titans are locked in a battle for supremacy. First to the market was Sony with their SAC 40,000T. This machine is a bold statement, built on a nine-axle carrier and engineered around a groundbreaking innovation, an 81-meter telescopic main boom, extendable with a 106-meter lattice extension or a 124-meter wind power jib for tip heights exceeding 200 meters. This single boom design, reinforced for extreme loads, solves the critical challenge of lateral force or side loading. When lifting massive, asymmetrical objects like wind turbine nacelles, immense twisting forces are exerted on the boom. Sony's high-strength telescopic boom, combined with optional guide extensions, provides unparalleled stiffness against this torsion, giving operators superior stability and control at extreme heights. It's a brilliant solution to one of the biggest challenges in heavy lifting. But XCMG was not far behind. Their answer was the XCA 4000, a machine purpose-built with one target in its sights, the wind turbine industry. Also rated at a nominal 4,000 metric tons, it was an exercise in focused design. It quickly made headlines with a series of astonishing lifts. In one widely publicized operation, it successfully hoisted a 230-ton turbine nacelle to a hub height of 558 feet, holding it steady in the wind while crews performed the complex connection. This feat, performed by a crane that had driven to the site, was a clear signal that the arms race had reached a new level. The raw numbers behind these titans are difficult to comprehend. To perform its maximum rated lifts, the XCA 4000 requires up to 440 metric tons of counterweight. This counterweight is delivered to the site by a dedicated convoy of more than 20 heavy-duty trucks. The setup process is a logistical ballet, with a smaller auxiliary crane working for hours to stack the massive slabs of steel onto the rear of the carrier. The ground pressure exerted by the outriggers is immense, exceeding 2,000 pounds per square inch, requiring deep, compacted gravel pads to be specially built at every single lift location. These are not just machines, they are mobile infrastructure projects. But the most important question remains unanswered. Why is this engineering revolution happening now, and why is the battle line being drawn between the rising giants of the East and the established titans of the West? The answer has little to do with hydraulics and everything to do with a new world order in heavy engineering. The billion-dollar prize for solving the mobility paradox has done more than just create a new machine. It has ignited a global battle for the very soul of heavy engineering. For half a century, the industry had an undisputed world order. The pinnacle of mobile crane technology was a German-engineered masterpiece. Born from the labs of giants like Liebherr and Demag, the Made in Germany seal on these machines was a bond, a guarantee of painstaking research, incremental innovation, and unshakable reliability. This was a fortress of engineering excellence, built over decades, and it seemed utterly impenetrable. That 50-year reign is now being fundamentally challenged, not by arrival from Europe or America, but by a seismic shift from the East. The challengers are the new titans of China, XCMG and Sony. Their rise was not accidental. It was forged in the crucible of the most rapid and expansive infrastructure boom in human history. 
While Western companies refined their designs, these Chinese firms were building a nation at a pace the world had never seen, gaining invaluable, real-world experience on a scale that was simply unavailable anywhere else. They are not just imitating, they are innovating, fueled by immense domestic demand and a national will to lead on the global stage. This has created a head-to-head -head battle for supremacy, a new Cold War fought on the frontiers of technology. It's a race for stronger, lighter steel alloys that can extend booms to previously unthinkable heights without buckling under immense loads. It's a software war to write the millions of lines of code for the crane's digital nervous system, a system that must calculate thousands of stability variables in real time to prevent a catastrophic failure. And it's a logistical race to perfect the modularity and semi-automated assembly systems that can shave precious hours off setup times. So, why are the world's biggest cranes learning to drive? Because the economic prize for mastering mobility became so vast, it forced a global confrontation for the engineering crown. The frantic, competitive push for more power, greater reach, and faster deployment is the engine driving this revolution forcing both the established Western kings and the ambitious Eastern challengers to push the very limits of physics. This race isn't just about who can claim the 4,000-ton title today. It's about who will own the technology that builds the world's infrastructure tomorrow. A new world order in heavy engineering is being forged in this battle, and its outcome is far from decided. Thanks for watching Hard Hat Industries your source for serious machines doing real work. If you like this, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's next. Until then, keep your head down and your gear running.